gonna mug me. I'm not gonna mug you. Is that gorgeous or what, eh? And I believe I can run the Peace and Marathon. Download Veely now. Germany's rivers, streams and lakes conceal an underwater world that few have seen. It's one of nature's best kept secrets. Hidden beneath the surface are some little known and bizarre animals. From swarms of microscopic creatures to exotic curiosities, and some of the largest freshwater giants on this planet. This is a journey unlike any other, from the snow-clad peaks of the Alps to the tidal waters of the North Sea, offering a rare glimpse into a colourful and mysterious underwater world. The journey begins in the Alps, Europe's highest mountain range. In the Berchtesgaden National Park, the sun's warming rays melt away the layers of snow to reveal the first signs of spring. Underneath a large glacier, meltwater slowly and silently carves away of the ice, forming a large underground cave. Drop by drop, the glacial dome releases its waters into the icy stream below, forming the Eisbach River. Every cubic meter of snow yields more than two bathtubs full of water. It's a huge reservoir of fresh water on the mountain slopes. Each spring, torrents of meltwater pour down the mountainsides producing some of the highest waterfalls in Germany, including the Röhrtbachfalls, with a drop of 470 meters. At the base of the fall, the water continues its journey underground, seeping into the porous limestone rocks. The Eisbach River shares a similar fate. It disappears into the ground just before reaching the Königsee. This deep fjord-like lake is renowned for its clear blue waters, which attract many visitors. The steep walls of the lake seem to continue endlessly downwards. The Königsee is one of Germany's deepest lakes. At the shallow end of the lake, the cold waters of the Eisbach River surface again. The crystal clear waters are poor in nutrients, creating a unique habitat. A shoal of small fish seek shelter among the sunken trees at the water's edge. They make an easy meal for predators. 
but the large northern pike is after much bigger prey. The ferocious water wolf is the most powerful predator in the lake, and even other hunters, such as perch, keep out of the way. With a length of up to a meter and a half, the size of a 12-year-old boy, it dwarfs all others in the lake and has no natural enemies other than man. Small fish and invertebrates find shelter from predators amongst the water plants that grow in the shallow and sunlit parts of the lake. The pike is an ambush predator, which has a trick up its sleeve. Its colors and markings match the surroundings, so that it's well camouflaged. Some have yellow golden stripes and spots, while others are a silvery blue. At the beginning of May, the pike gather in their favorite spawning sites, ready for the breeding season. The males arrive a few days before the females. She is the larger of the two, and he needs to keep up with her, staying close by her side. This mating ritual can last several days. The smaller male may well be wary of his large partner. Pike are known to resort to cannibalism when food is scarce, and will not shy away from eating their counterparts. But nature has found a solution to this problem. Females do not feed during the breeding season, ensuring that their partners and future offspring are safe. The social life of frogs and toads is a less precarious affair. They do not partake in cannibalism. The beginning of the breeding season is an excuse for one gigantic party. While intentions may be amorous, things can sometimes get out of hand. In the ensuing mating frenzy, a group of writhing males may risk drowning the object of their desire. After two or three days of frenetic activity, it's all over. A storm is brewing above the newly laid spawn. A heavy downpour quickly raises the water levels in the Koenig Sea. Within a few hours, the streams are wild and unruly. Now there is only one way out of the lake, through the Koenig Sea Weir. This man-made barrier helps control the flow of the river. Countless brooks and streams, fed by glacial water and rain, carve their way down the mountainsides. What starts as a trickle soon becomes a gushing cascade, gathering in force both above and below the ground.
The power of the water shapes the landscape, wearing down rocks and entire mountains. The River Rhine is one such stream, born high up in the Alps. Now it winds its way towards the plains, until it empties its waters into Lake Constance, one of Germany's biggest lakes, depositing huge amounts of sediments carried down from the mountains. The cold, turbid water quickly sinks to the bottom. Millions of tons of sediment are poured into the lake each year. The milky curtain gives way to clearer waters and a dazzling array of underwater creatures. A stickleback guards its nest and fans the eggs to ensure they have a steady supply of oxygen. A pair of pumpkin seed fish, an invasive species from North America, are immersed in their courtship dance. In the deeper water of the lake, a hungry pike is on the prowl. Once it has identified a target, there is little chance of escape. The victim's partner is unlikely to fare much better. The dense underwater forests are home to a more secretive hunter. It mostly hides among the vegetation without moving and is rarely seen. A Wells catfish, Europe's largest freshwater predator and a true giant. If conditions are right, it can grow to over three meters in length and weigh 150 kilograms. It has strange whisker-like barbels around its gaping mouth with which it engulfs its prey. Fantastic myths long surrounded this elusive creature, which was believed to be able to swallow a man whole. In fact, the catfish prefers to hide in the dark depths of the lake. Lake Constance is over 250 meters deep, formed by glaciers during the Ice Age. The little light that penetrates beyond a depth of 30 meters is not sufficient to sustain plant growth. Creatures that live here need to be highly specialized. Zebra mussels were accidentally introduced in the 1960s and have rapidly multiplied. Today, huge carpets of mussels cover the rock face, filtering tiny particles of food from the water. They have become an important source of food for many diving ducks. The burbot is the only member of the cod family that lives in fresh water. 
It also lives in the cold darkness at the bottom of the lake. The lake floor is home to a community of highly specialized creatures. They scavenge on the dead remains of plants and animals that have sunk to the bottom. Fresh water crabs search the lake bed for carcasses. They are nature's recyclers and together with tiny worms and bacteria ensure that nothing is wasted. Lake Constance is also a massive ship graveyard. Numerous old wrecks, such as the paddle steamer Eura, lie in the dark, waiting for the sediments drifting down from above to bury them completely. Lake Constance has long been an important shipping route for Germany, Austria and Switzerland, and most of the shoreline is well developed. Over three and a half million people live along its shores. The large human population makes life increasingly difficult for the lake's wildlife. And each year, another six million tourists and countless day visitors descend on the area. The lake is struggling to survive under the onslaught. Lake Constance has long attracted human settlers to its shores, and the evidence can still be seen under the surface today. The first settlements date back to 4,000 years BC. These early pioneers built their houses on stilts in the water. The water offered them safety from enemies and wild animals. Today, these ancient dwellings are a world heritage site. The sunlit edges of the lake are rich in wildlife. Shallow waters are the perfect nursery grounds for small fish. It's easy pickings for the grey heron. The pumpkin seed fish are also raising their young in the warm water. The hard-working male has excavated a nest on the gravelly lake floor and is keeping a close watch over his brood. Any intruders that venture too closely are quickly seen off.
It's July, and all around the edge of the lake, hundreds of tiny tadpoles have hatched in the warm shallows. In recent years, the water quality of the lake has been improved by reducing pollution. It's had a positive impact on the plant and animal life, and the clearer waters allow the tadpoles to develop earlier. The eggs of the pike are also about to hatch. The translucent globes are attached to the underwater vegetation. Inside, the young pike are developing. The hatchlings still get nourishment from their yolk sac for a few days until they're big enough to hunt for food. The Rhine continues to flow underneath Lake Constance and emerges at the southwestern end to resume its journey as a river. Soon after, it turns into a spectacular cascade, forming the biggest waterfalls in Europe, the Rhine Falls of Schaffhausen. The course of the river now takes it through the mountain ranges of central Germany and the famous Black Forest. During the last ice age, the Black Forest mountains were buried beneath large glaciers. The many small lakes are remnants from this time. The Schluchsee was originally one such glacial lake. But in the 1930s, a dam was built to turn it into a huge water reservoir, the highest in Germany. Its dark yellow waters hold a little known secret. The curious color comes from balls of peat sitting at the bottom of the lake. During the Second World War, the lake was covered in peat and dead wood to hide it from enemy planes looking to bomb the dam. The Allies never found the lake, and the peat is still here today, giving the water its dark brown tint. The murky water also hides other reminders of the past. the remnants of the old original dam. It's a lost world, now occupied by the real inhabitants of the lake. Others have erected a cross on the lake bed. And a little further, a sculpture of the Madonna. East of the Schluchsee is Germany's biggest canyon, 30 kilometers long, formed by the river Wutach. Wutach means furious water, 
And indeed, the white water cursing through the valley has carved out the deep gorge in little more than 70,000 years. It has created its own microclimate with an extraordinary diversity of plants and animals. Amongst them is a survivor from the Ice Age, the Star Gentian. More than 600 different kinds of butterfly live within the gorge. As well as countless dragonflies and other insects. Mayflies perform their exquisite mating dance. This annual spectacle is short-lived. Most of them will be dead by the end of the day. Below the surface, a trout is waiting to ambush its prey. A large school of minnows is just beyond reach. The clear water reveals a wealth of other small creatures scuttling between the rocks. The larvae of insects such as mayflies and caddisflies that start their life underwater. They make easy pickings for those who know where to find them. The dipper specializes in just such prey. The dipper uses its wings to swim underwater. The hungry chicks need constant feeding. Someone else is also looking for food. A fire salamander. It's searching the riverbank for small insects and slugs. Fire salamanders need small streams with cold, clean water to live in. The Vutach provides the perfect conditions. This female is about to give birth and needs to seek out water urgently. Unlike most amphibians which lay eggs, fire salamanders give birth to live young. The fully developed baby salamanders are released straight into the water. She will give birth to up to 30 babies at a time. As soon as they leave the safety of the womb, the young salamanders have to fend for themselves. Their mother's job is done. Not so for the mother dipper. She still needs to care for her young brood, even though the chicks have left the nest. Her job 
is to introduce them to their watery habitat and show them how to hunt for food. But the young chick is not convinced. It will take another few days before the youngsters are ready to brave the torrents. The young fire salamanders have no such privileges. They have to catch their own dinner. But it will take a little practice. His perseverance pays off. The water coursing through the Wutach Canyon has traveled from the high Alps and made its way through rock crevices, lakes and streams. But its journey is not just over land. Water can cover great distances in the air. Millions of tiny droplets gather into massive clouds and float across the sky. Eventually, they return to Earth as rain and continue their journey on land. Some droplets choose a more unusual route. They seep through the porous rocks, forming underground streams, as in the limestone hills in the Swabian Alps. Prehistoric fossils litter the riverbed. And eventually, the water is forced out again as a natural spring. The remarkable turquoise color of the Blautopf, or blue cauldron, comes from the high concentration of limestone in the water. And beneath it is a vast network of caves, which has only recently been discovered. Modern diving equipment has enabled us to venture into this alien world. The entrance to the cave system lies 20 meters below the surface. A little further, and the divers find the bone of a human arm. It's one of the many mysteries of these strange caves. Diving here is tricky and dangerous, and much of the vast labyrinth is still unexplored. Only the most experienced divers are allowed down here, into this unknown world.
The deeper they penetrate, the more they discover. Enormous caves the size of cathedrals and the most spectacular natural sculptures. It's a majestic fairyland of stalactites and stalagmites, stone pillars and stone curtains. It's a challenge navigating a way through the rocky maze and not without its hazards. One moment they face the narrowest of rock crevices The next, a descent into a deep sinkhole. So far, only 10 kilometers of the cave system has been explored, but it's thought to be several dozen kilometers long. Cave exploration is as much of an adventure as a science. Part of the aim is to map the underground terrain and get a better understanding of the geology. The hard work and persistence finally pays off. Chemical analyses may provide clues as to the source of the water and the route it has covered. At the northern rim of the Swabian Alps, the water flows directly from the river Neckar into the Rhine. The upper Rhine is more of a canal than a river, having been straightened in the 19th century. It was once up to three kilometers wide in parts, winding its way through the swampy floodplains. Until a few decades ago, the water was highly polluted. In recent years, this has changed, bringing back many of the fish that had long disappeared. Along the small sidearms of the river, swampy forests that once covered the floodplain are still preserved today. It's Germany's Amazon, rich in wildlife. Crystal clear waters, a near Caribbean blue in color. And it's all down to the many underwater springs that feed clear, cold water into the streams. The result is a unique habitat with an unusual variety of plants and animals. A large freshwater turtle introduced from North America appears to feel at home here.
The near tropical conditions and warm sunshine are maybe not that different to the Everglades in Florida. It's an idyllic scene, completed by the display of yellow flowers of the bladderwort. But beneath the surface, the story is more sinister. The bladderwort is a carnivorous hunter. The small bladders are, in fact, deadly traps. Inside, there is a partial vacuum. The slightest touch to one of the trigger hairs, and the trapdoor flies open, sucking in passing prey. It all takes just a split second. The flooded forests are also home to a larger predator, the European otter. With its long, streamlined body, it's perfectly adapted to a life in water. The thick, waterproof fur keeps them dry and warm underwater, so they can play for hours on end. For centuries, otters were persecuted for their fur and disappeared from many parts of Germany. Today, they are protected and populations are slowly recovering again. It's midsummer. The pike hatchlings are now big enough to hunt for prey. But small fish only need small meals. Fishborn, water fleas, and small insects. They are still only four centimeters long, but already bold enough to tackle other fish. But this one has bitten off more than it can chew. Other small hunters are hiding in the vegetation. Tiny soft-bodied polyps called hydra stretch out their thin arms in search of prey. Their tentacles are lined with highly specialized stinging cells that will fire poisonous threads into their victim. A dense cloud of freshwater shrimp. They've invaded Western Europe from the Black Sea and are spreading rapidly through Germany. Divers have reported seeing colossal swarms of millions of animals. A jellyfish, another invasive species. Originally from Southeast Asia, it has successfully managed to spread around the world. It's the only freshwater jellyfish to be found in Europe. This exotic invader feeds mainly on water fleas and other small invertebrates. So far, it seems to be causing little damage to its new home. The turtles calmly watch the activities of the busy otters. Newcomers and old residents live peacefully side by side here. It would seem that not all new arrivals are harmful to the environment. Some simply make our natural world 
a little more colorful. It's autumn, and there's change in the air. The colorful autumn leaves float down to the surface before sinking to the bottom of the stream. It's an annual cycle of life and death that is played out both above and below water. Purple sulfur bacteria thrive in the stagnant water and decompose the dead leaves and vegetation. It's a surreal landscape, the purple globes floating within a virtual galaxy. Each autumn, the bacteria form shroud-like blooms. But by the coming spring, they've disappeared again. This underwater wall of fog is also formed by bacteria. It's a sign that winter is on its way. The eerie calls of the common crane echo through the valley as they gather to begin their long migration south. The otter's thick fur also protects it against the cold winter. All it needs at this time of year is some open water where it can hunt for fish. A thick layer of ice has formed, sealing off the shallow pools and lakes. The cold temperatures have driven most creatures into hiding. The fish seek out a sheltered spot near the bottom and sit out the winter in a torpor. They slow down their metabolism and breathing to save energy and wait for spring. Once temperatures rise again, the water, now locked in ice, will be freed once more and can continue its journey towards the sea.